practice at least every day. Sometimes twice a day. Other times, if the wolves are moving a lot, we'll stay out all day and all night. They're capable of moving easily 20, 30 miles in a couple hours. They can really move quickly. Boy, it's pretty thick vegetation up here. Yeah, and the, the vegetation affects a lot of the radio signals too, almost as almost as much as it affects vision. I mean, it'll it'll block radio signals from the animals' transmitters. And these hills are straight up like mountains. It's mountains. What uh, what happened to the red wolf here? Why did it disappear? Well, across its original range, the southeast, when European settlers came over 200 years, 300 years ago, they changed the land. It was naturally a forested area for the most part, and the land was now changed for agricultural purposes. The settlers at that time saw the wolf as a competitor for prey, for food, and they began to hunt, trap, poison, whatever means possible to eradicate these animals from what they now claimed as their property. The red wolf was pushed to the brink of extinction basically because white man wanted to use the land for his own purposes. So what we've done is we really made this kill all the predators. Right. Yeah, I'm getting somebody real close. Here. Can I listen? Sure. Can't hold that. Wow. You think I can find them? I think anybody could do it. Yeah, but I got my binoculars. I got everything. You're set. A mug spray. Then you turn that thing on. Yeah. Jack. Jack. Huh? Signals. Signals. I can't hear you. What? Signals are down this way. Oh. It's hard to hear if these things all. Oh, man, this wolf's in a hard place to find. Scared the wolves. They probably know we're here already. Jack, Jack, come down here. You, well, you were doing okay. This is this is the front of the antenna. The wolves are up up this way. What? This is the front of the antenna. The wolves are up this way. Okay. You had the antenna sideways. Yeah, you're right. I can hear a lot better. I can hear a lot better. It's amazing how quickly we mess things up. Look how long it takes to get it back to what it was. Well, when you try to reestablish something, you first have to understand it. And it's a very complicated system. It's very easy to mess something up because you're not paying attention to it. We know more about canids, dogs, than any other animal on the planet. We live with them. We have them in our house. They're part of our families. And our domestic dogs are direct descendants of wild wolves. We should be able to understand that social animal better than any other animal on the planet. And if we can't do it with wolves, that's less hope that we can do it with some other animal that we know less about. After experiencing the beauty of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, we continued our journey by getting a taste of the local history and the colorful characters found in Dollywood, a seasonal park in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Dollywood, of which Dolly Parton herself is part owner, is committed to preserving our national heritage and the native wildlife that calls these mountains home. Good afternoon, everyone. How you doing? Well, good. Welcome to Dollywood. Welcome to Wings of America. My name is John Stokes. I'm Wildlife Program Coordinator for the National Foundation to Protect America's Eagles. The NFPAE is working in cooperation with Dollywood to restore the eagle population in the wild and to inform the public about the plight of endangered and threatened birds. Birds of prey are predators at the top of the food chain. Their job is to keep nature in balance by eating the weak, the sick, and the extra. We are predators ourselves. The bald eagle has but one natural enemy, the human. Now, humans are the eagle's only hope for a full recovery. I got to meet one of the stars of the bird show after it was over, a beautiful bald eagle named Osceola. John, was this eagle taken from the wild? Yes, uh, Osceola was shot uh, back in 1983, and his left wing had been severely damaged and required us to amputate it to save his life. Now, I know one of the problems with the bald eagle is that that white head does not turn white until it's about three years old. Do you think that's why a lot of people might shoot him? 
Well, yeah, uh, if they probably acquired the white head and tail as soon as they uh, got their plumage, then there's probably less uh, shooting because most people can recognize a bald eagle. But an immature bald eagle is very dark, and uh, some people still shoot at anything that flies over. They shoot at vultures and eagles and whatnot. That beak looks like it could tear somebody's head off. Well, he has a very strong beak. Uh, it's very well designed for dismantling fish. You see an eagle eat a fish, you see that beak exactly what it's made for. Of course, the feet they use to catch the prey. And this bird probably has a thousand pounds per square inch of pressure in its feet. So once it grabs something, it usually doesn't let it go. Very powerful feet. Here you, at Dollywood, you have a huge eagle sanctuary. It must be one of the biggest in the country. Yeah, it is, as far as we know. Uh, we currently house about 14 eagles here. And uh, we have three pairs set up for breeding. Now, are all your bald eagles here injured? Yeah, so we're able to take birds that cannot survive in the wild and produce young that can go back in place. We almost lost our national symbol in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. We had fewer than 500 nesting pairs in the lower 48 states. This year, I think we have uh, about, oh, 31 to 3,300 nesting wow. pairs. So they're rebounding. They're, res they're responding to our efforts. I continue to hobnob with celebrities. Hey, look who's playing, Ricky Skaggs. I gotta go find him. Hmm. John told me that Ricky had met the bald eagle, Osceola, ten years earlier, and I was about to set up a reunion between the two of them. Hi, Ricky. How you doing? Understand you know this bird here. Well, I sure do. It's my old friend, Osceola. I remember meeting him, uh, gosh, back in 81 or 82, back in Nashville. How you doing, friend? He's doing pretty good. John here runs him in the show and uh, yeah. tells people about the bald eagle here in Tennessee and throughout the southeast. He's doing real well though right now. Yeah, I remember him. Uh, he uh, he had, a, had a bad wing when I first met him. Looks like he's done pretty well. Of course, now we're going to release uh, one of these eagles uh, tomorrow, the next day out of the wild. Oh, I'm anxious to be there and see that. I want to be there. The next morning, we met with Al Cicero, the founder and president of the National Foundation to Protect America's Eagles. Well, let's go. Now let let's us go out see. to the remote site okay. where the eagles would be released. The birds here, from where are they from? We've got one that we hatched out at our national center at Dollywood, and uh, one from the Birmingham Zoo that was hatched out there. Both parent race birds. Great. You know what's amazing, Ricky, is this is the first time these birds have ever flown. Really? Can you imagine? No, can you imagine jumping out of a tower, hundred or so feet in the air, and never flown before? Not. <laughs> Not me. I don't think I. Okay. One thing we'd like you to do today is uh, one of these birds was named by Dolly Parton. She uh -huh. named it Star, but we have not named the other one yet. And okay. we'd like you to have the honor of uh, naming one of the birds. Well, I'd love to name one of the birds. Any ideas? Yeah. Elijah. How yeah. do you like that name? That'd be a great name. Elijah. Okay. Yeah. We, a beautiful name. It'll be Elijah and Star. All right. Gaining their freedom today. Yeah. Great. Good. So they're not used to people down here. Because uh, we don't want the eagles to know we're here. And we want to distract them so that they'll you know, jump out prematurely. Are you afraid of heights? Not at all. Let me go first here. Those are still snakes in here. I hate snakes. I don't want them. I do a few spiders up there. No snakes. I wouldn't have missed the experience of releasing an eagle to fly free for anything in the world. Go over here, we're ready to pull the rope that'll open the cage door to release them. I'd like to have you two have the honor of doing this. This hasn't been done very many times, has it? No, it hasn't. We do it here. Let's go ahead and pull, pull it. Let's get it off your pull it very slowly. Then the vigil began. We knew that the birds could either bolt like a racehorse out of its gate, or they could decide to stay in the security of the hack tower for a few more days. Slowly passed, and it seemed like forever 
as we watch the birds build their confidence before taking to flight. Come on, son. He just soared right up. All right. Come on, Elijah. He's thinking about it. Come on, Elijah. You can do it. There you go,